Once the news happens, then we bring in our next guest to explain exactly what's going on. And if you listen to him throughout the weeks and months here as the KHS legal analyst, you are getting an education. St. Louis University law professor Greg Willard, friend of the show. Welcome back. Welcome back, sir. Good morning, McGraw. All right. School is in session. The Supreme Court is going to hear cases, uh, a case today uh, on President Obama's uh, action to allow illegal immigrants to stay in the country. What's going on here? See if we can set the stage, McGraw. Any uh, nation, including America, has the right to decide who comes in. Right. And once they're in, who can stay from right. a foreign country. Unfortunately, our borders are not hermetically sealed. Right. Whether we build a wall and have Mexico pay for it or otherwise, it's not hermetically sealed. Uh, right now, we have 11 million people right. in this country who are here in violation of our federal immigration laws. Illegal immigrants, they're sometimes referred to. Congress and the president have attempted for years to amend the federal laws with respect to immigration policy. They have failed. In 2012, President Obama unilaterally acted and gave deferred uh, prosecution, if you will, deferred deportation to 1.2 million children under 18. In 2014, he took it a step further and unilaterally issued an executive order through the Department of Homeland Security and deferred the deportation of approximately 5 million adults. 26 states sued the president and the Department of Homeland Security in federal court in Texas. A federal judge in Texas enjoined implementation of his 2014 unilateral order. The United States Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed that uh, injunction. Mm -hmm. And this, in about an hour and a half, the United States Supreme Court is going to take up the case. Okay. The 2012 was, that was the dreamers, right? Those are the ones, the kids who were brought over by illegal parents. They, were, they weren't born here. They were one or two. They spent their entire lives here. This is all they know. Through no fault of their own, they, they, they find themselves an illegal immigrant in this country, graduated from high school and whatever else. President Obama said, we shouldn't throw them out. He, he said, we are going to, quote, defer their deportation. That's about 1.2 million uh, young folks, McGraw. Then, then the second one in 2014, he, he said, there are people who are... Um, well, they might have been, they, there's some, they're, they're not as bad as the bad guys. They're not the worst that we need to deport. So let's, let's keep them here as well. Right? Right. They, <clears throat> there's a, a, a series of criteria. One of which is you, you cannot have been convicted of a, a prior crime or right. felony. So of, of this, uh, out of this group of 5 million who are subject to the 2014 mm -hmm. unilateral action, right. um, in theory, all five million uh, are, generally speaking, uh, right. law-abiding folks. They're just here illegally. Right. Now, President Obama, as well as probably the Bush administration would tell you, Professor Greg Willard, St. Louis University law professor, we don't have the resources to kick all 11, 000, 11 million out. We need to prioritize. What's so terrible about prioritizing the worst of the worst and leave the other ones who aren't so bad until we figure out what to do with them? That, that is precisely, McGraw, the position that uh, the president and the Justice Department are taking, is that this is an exercise of what is known as prosecutorial discretion. Uh, it widely recognized in that if, if an individual, for example, uh, commits a drug crime and uses a weapon, the United States attorney decides, you know what, we're just going to charge that person with the gun violation and not the drug crime. Mm -hmm. Well, even though that the drug crime, that they violated federal law, that's prosecutorial discretion as to which of those charges to bring. And what the president has said is, I have prosecutorial discretion. I have presidential power to decide who, what, when, where, and how to deport these folks, and I'm going to exercise it. Don't all presidents use some type of a discretion in all sorts of areas? They do, McGraw, and, and, I, and there's the rub. And what the 26 states have said is he has gone too far to unilaterally decide that 5 million people who are here presumably illegally mm -hmm. are not going to be deported. 
the states have said that is a direct violation of the Constitution. Specifically, the President of the United States has a duty under the Constitution to take care to see that the laws are faithfully executed. And what the states have said is when you give a, a blanket pass, if you will, McGraw, to five million people, you are not exercising prosecutorial discretion, and you most certainly are not faithfully executing the laws of the United States. Okay, so uh, since there are only eight justices now, um, we're not gonna, we, we might get a tie. Um, it stands now, this isn't in effect because these lower courts ruled it unconstitutional, right? That is correct, and, and as you and I have talked about uh, several times before on the air, uh, with the death of Justice Scalia, it very well could be that this ends up the vote is four to four. The result of that is that the lower court decision will be affirmed and therefore the injunction will remain in place. Right. I think what that means as a policy matter is we will have to wait till January 20th of 2017 right. to see what the next chapter is. So the next president who comes along who says, I have a discretion and I do X... Right. What mm -hmm. does what does the president have a discretion on and what doesn't the president have a discretion on? Seems to me like you open up a whole can of worms here. I think what the, the I th what the, the opponents would say, the 26 states is the president certainly has discretion as to an individual or maybe a family unit. He does not have discretion as to giving prosecutorial a prosecutorial pass, if you will, defer, deferred deportation mm -hmm. to five million people. Now, is is ten too many? Is fifty too many? Who knows? But if this is affirmed by four to four or otherwise, the new president, I think, will be left with seeing how far he or she can go mm -hmm. in January of 2017. Or, or they could just pass some type of immigration reform bill and move this along. <laughs> well, they could, but and and you and you suggest, my dear friend, that, uh, that Congress and the president uh, uh, are passing legislation efficiently, and uh, we, you and I might quarrel about that. All right, two more credits for those who are listening <laughs> towards your St. Louis University law a degree. Greg Willard, KTRS Legal Analyst. Thank you, sir. As always, always great to be with you, my friend. Seven fifty-eight, Big Five Fifty, K.